All right. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. This is Anthony Smoke. Go ahead and check me out on anthonysmoke.com. Definitely hit subscribe here on YouTube as always. If you learned something, go ahead, leave a comment, hit that like button, and make sure you ring that bell so you get a notification when I drop a new video. So today, back in Tableau, uh, gonna show you how to put your, uh, your dimensions uh, labels above your bar chart here in Tableau. So the data set that I'm using is from basketballreference.com. This is the 2020-2021 uh, season, and we're looking at NBA three-point uh, field goals made per game. And you can see here, uh, these are the teams. Uh, here's the bar charts. And Utah Jazz, I'll talk a little bit about them uh, later, but wow, 16.7 uh, three-point field goals made per game. That's, uh, that is really impressive. So i uh, going to show you how to do this, uh, this technique here. And I got to give a shout out to Adolfo Hernandez. Um, this, is, this video is based heavily upon his technique. I'm probably going to go into a little bit more detail um, than he shares. But, um, but again, got to give credit where credit is due. Shout out to uh, Adolfo uh, Hernandez here. So uh, let's get started with this again. I'm using uh, from the 2020 uh, 2021 NBA uh, uh, season uh, team data per game data, and you can find that on basketballreference.com. And so I'm going to take my um, my dimension here, which is team, and put that on a rows. And I'm going to take three points, three pointers made, and put that on columns. And let's go ahead and sort that. Right. And then we can take the team and put that on label. And I'm going to take three pointers made and also put that on uh, label. Then I'm going to go in here to label. I'm going to select the text and we're going to do something like this. Right. I'm just going to put a space. And we'll say OK. And I end up with uh, my team and then my three pointers made. And so what I can do, I'm just going to go ahead and format this. Go up here to numbers, custom, and let's do one decimal point. Uh, that's all we need. And then we're going to do one of these, a placeholder. Hopefully uh, you know this technique by now if you've been uh, watching my videos. We're going to have a little placeholder uh, in here. Now you would think we would do a dual axis and there is a, there is a technique uh, for that, but we're not going to do a, a dual access. So we're going to make a, um, a combined chart. So I'm going to take my ag zero and drag it down here to this axis. And you'll see now we have um, uh, both of these on the same axis. So I have the team. So I have three pointers and I have um, my placeholder average of zero. And you want to make sure that your Average is zero is above. Your placeholder is above, right? So we want that to, to, to be above. Now let's go ahead and hide these headers. Let's hide the axis, right? And then we can do a little, actually, I don't even need to see the, well, I'm going to keep that for now. Let's go ahead and do some formatting. Let's, um, let's go up here to the borders. Uh, we can turn the turn that off. Uh, column dividers uh, none. Make sure everything looks good here. All right, and now I'm going to go into lines. Let's go in the sheet here. Make sure there's no zero lines. Um, on the columns, make sure there's no grid lines. All right, so now now we are so fresh and so clean here. And then I'm going to go into the tooltip, right? So when I hover over this, all right, so let's just, we don't want to show tooltip. That's okay. All right, so now I don't, I don't show my tooltip. Okay, so this is where the magic happens now. So I'm going to go in here to the label, and I'm going to select, uh, let's go down here to min max, right? And you'll see that shows up. And I want to select the pane, not table pane and then let's use measure let's start with measure values select measure values and then down here I want to make sure obviously I want to allow labels to overlap other marks because if I don't have that selected that goes away but I'm going to select label minimum value 
So why does that work? Because on the measure value, right, this is zero, right? This is really like my average of zero is zero, whereas this is going to be, right, that 16.7. So when I say label the minimum value, I get the labels to show up up top here. Make sense? Or there's an alternate way you could do this. If you want to select measure names and say label the maximum value, you get the same thing. So, so why does that work? So if I were to show you, if we would go over here to filters and I say show filter and go back in here, um, I'm showing the label maximum value and it's showing me the value for average zero. So if we look at the measure names, if we look at this alphabetically, average zero is going to be the maximum out of three pointers and, and average zero. So that's why it shows up um, with a maximum value. So you can go either way uh, to, make, to make the value show up top here. Right? Make sense? Okay, so now you can do something like this. If I were to go into color and to the border... And let's make that white, or basically make that match your background. And you'll see, I used to have, well, I used to have, let me control Z out of this. Right, you see I have this little tiny, like, a border that's barely showing up because it is a value of zero. So when I go in here to the color and select white to make that match the background, that goes away. And then obviously I can, here, let's just get rid of that. And and there you go. If you wanted to stop there, you could you could stop there if you wanted to. I'm just changing the color. So what if you want a zero line? So there's two ways to do that uh, as well. I'm going to give you give you two ways here. So we can go in here. I'm going to right click and go to format. I'm going to go to lines, and then on my sheet for zero lines, I'm going to choose this third one here, and I'm going to color this black. And you'll notice. Like, I don't quite get, because that, that border is here, I don't quite get the line connected. So what I have to do, I have to go back to my border, and I want that black line, right? So I go to border, and I change that to black. And so make sure your opacity, like if your opacity is down here, it's going to be, oops, not, not this one, sorry. Um, nope, nope, so you're good here. So, yeah. Just make sure that uh, you choose that, that third option. I like the third option. It looks the, the cleanest here. And that's how you can, you can get a line, right? Now, there's another way to do it as well. So I'm going to control Z out of this. Let's just back out to where I don't have a line, right? Uh, you can also do this with a, um, go in the analytics. You can throw a constant on here uh, with a value of zero. And, yeah, that's what I was trying to show you before. We'll get to that, the, the opacity here. So if I go in here, let's, let's right-click, and let's do a format first. And I can choose this third value. I like the third thickness. This is, this is what I was looking for earlier, the opacity. So let's crank that all the way up so we get a true black there, right? That comes through pretty well. And you still have this kind of zero down here. And so we can right-click. And I will say, well, let's edit instead of format. Let's make this none. And we don't need a tooltip. Say OK. And that is an alternate way to get your line. So I'm giving you kind of two ways to get your lines, giving you two ways uh, to make your, your label show up uh, up top with a little explanation on why it works, right? So now getting back, all right, so you got what you needed there. I'm going to talk a little NBA. So getting back, actually, I can show you this uh, as well. Um, let me go in here to cell size, and we can make this, if I wanted to make that taller, right, I could do that. Um, that way, if you needed to make this size uh, a little, um, if you needed to bring the size up, could go in here and make that, yeah, yeah, I don't know, 12 <laughs> and uh, maybe bold, what have you, right? If you wanted to do something like that, uh, you could do that. I'm going to back out of this to what we had. And then obviously you can play with the size, right? So, you know, hell, you could turn this all the way down if you wanted to be artsy <laughs> about it, right? But you can play with the size to get it right, right where you need it. So again, I uh, hope this helped you out. want to talk a little bit about the Utah Jazz. I mean, they're just amazing at 16.7 uh, threes. They're the best three-point shooting team in NBA history. 
Um, they were the only team to hit 10 plus threes in every game in a single season. I mean, that's that's just amazing. They hit 1,205 three-pointers in the uh, 2021 season franchise uh, record and, you know, good enough for third most in NBA history and consider that we only played 71 games this past season. So a lot of good players on Utah, Joe Ingles, Jordan Clarkson, uh, Bojan Bogdanovic, not related to the Bogdanovic in Atlanta. And then Donovan Mitchell, who's amazing, 601 three-point field goals, fastest player in NBA history to knock down. So uh, for those of you, for the Utah fans that are still left here, shout out to you. Um, and then again, hope you enjoyed this tip. This has been Anthony Smoke. Get out there, do some great things with your data. Thanks for watching, everyone.